Hello everyone, welcome to the second module of the course. In the previous module, we recapitulated the content that we had discussed in the previous course. And then we discussed how self is central to human existence. We also talked about the basic human aspiration and we saw that the basic human aspiration that is continuity of happiness is fulfilled by ensuring resolution in the self. And now we'll be talking about the human being in much more detail. So this module is titled as right understanding that is knowing and we'll talk about what is the knower, what is to be known and what would be the process of knowing. And in lecture seven, we are going to talk about right understanding in detail. So if you look at the human desire and its fulfillment, so as we said earlier, the human desire is continuous happiness and this is the need of the self. And this continuous happiness is going to be fulfilled by ensuring right understanding, right feeling and right thought in the self. And this is an activity of the self. Right, right feeling and right thought can be called as resolution together. Now if, you look at, now, if you look at resolution in detail, it is the clarity of these nine things, starting from right understanding, that is 3.1. So if you look at the human desire and its fulfillment, something that we discussed in the previous lecture. So the human desire is continuity of happiness. And we had said that feeling of prosperity is included in the feeling of happiness. And this is going to be there in the self. It is the need of the self. Continuous happiness is going to be fulfilled by ensuring right understanding, right feeling and right thought. And this is an activity of the self and it is also going to be ensured in the self. Right feeling and right thought can be together called as resolution. If, if you, you expand, expand resolution, there are nine things included in resolution starting from right understanding, that is 3.1. On the basis of right understanding, uh, wisdom is ensured. And on the basis of wisdom, the science gets clear the signs to fulfill the human goal and then on that basis we are able to make out the program for behavior work and participation in the larger order which is going to happen at the level of human being when the self and the body both are included and as a natural outcome of this we are able to participate in undivided society universal human order and human tradition and we are able to see that this congruence of the human tradition with what was decided in the wisdom so I hope you are able to recollect this. You are able to understand this. Now going further, we are going to talk about right understanding. So we have been talking about right understanding from UHV 1, isn't it? And we could see that right understanding is the first priority of a human being. We also elaborated upon right understanding and we are going to elaborate upon right understanding still further. So this is something that we said earlier that the first three are going to take place in the self. The second three are going to take place at the level of human being and the next three are going to take place in the expression outside. Now, what is right understanding? So right understanding is to see the reality as it is in its completeness. So what is the reality? The whole existence is the reality. So you are there, I am there, I and you are related. This is also a reality. The rest of the nature is there around soil, air, water, animals, birds, plants, trees, shrubs, all these are there. And these all are a part of reality. So can I see this reality as it is without mixing any belief, without mixing any preconditioning? Can I see the reality? So to see the reality is right understanding and that is called as knowing. Now, if you look at this in detail, so you'll see that right understanding of a unit and the unit is activity is to able to see its five things form property natural characteristic innateness and coexistence so in any unit these five uh, things are included the form and property is something which is having a variety which is changing the natural characteristic innateness and coexistence is something which is definite, continuous and universal. So what is to be known? So right understanding is essentially seeing the essence of the reality as it is, that is seeing the part that is definite, continuous and universal. Now let us look at these words one by one. So what is form? Form means the shape, size, density. For example, you see a building. So what do you see? You see the form of the building, you see the shape of the building, the size of the building, okay, and you are able to make out 
the density of the building by looking at it, isn't it, to some extent. And we'll see that the form that includes the shape, size and density is something which is having a variety. There are so many buildings, maybe every building has a different shape, size, isn't it? And you may also see that the shape, size keeps on changing. Now let us look at all these words in detail. So starting with form. So what is form? Form includes the shape, size, density. For example, you look at a tree. Now the tree has a shape, isn't it? The tree has a size and the tree has density also. So when you go to see a tree, you do see the form. And we'll see that the shape of the tree, the size of the tree, the density of the tree may keep on changing from time to time. And there are so many kinds of trees <clears throat> and every tree may have a different shape, size, density, isn't it? So this is something which is having a variety and which may keep changing also. So in the tree, we can see that there is growth and the shape keeps changing. The size keeps changing. The density may also change depending upon the part of the tree that you're trying to look at. So this is one part of the reality. Let me also say that through your senses, you are able to see only a part of the form. You're not able to see the complete form. So when you look at the tree, you are able to see the front face of the tree, but the rear face is not visible to you. So this is one part of the reality. The second part of the reality is the property and property means effect on another unit. Now the tree is having some property with air, with water, with soil, isn't it? And this includes the effect of the tree on the air, water and soil and vice versa. And this is another part of the reality. We'll see that this is also changing. The property is also changing. When the tree is green, it has one kind of property. When the tree has uh, died out, it has another kind of property, isn't it? So the same tree may exhibit different kinds of property at different points of time. So you'll see that there's variety and there's a change in the property also. Now different kinds of trees might be there and every tree may have a different property. For example, if you have to consume something as food, you consume what is edible. Different trees could have different properties and not every tree is consumable. And not every tree or the produce obtained from the tree will have the same effect on your body. So when you are interacting with the tree through your body, then there are two units involved here. One is the tree and the other is the body. And then you will see that the property may keep on changing from time to time. Now, the next three is something which is definite, continuous and universal. And this is the content of knowing. So natural characteristic is the participation in the larger order. And natural characteristic essentially means the relationship. So as a human being, what is my natural characteristic? What is the natural characteristic of a tree? What is the natural char characteristic of uh, wood? What is the natural characteristic of a building? So we'll see that essentially it is the order to which the unit belongs. And based on the order, it has a definite continuous and universal natural characteristic. So if a unit belongs to the bio order, it will have one kind of natural characteristic. If it belongs to animal order, it will have a different kind of natural characteristic. And if it belongs to physical order, it will again have a different kind of natural characteristic. But so long as it belongs to a particular order, it is going to be definite, continuous, and universal. We'll study about this and see how. Innateness means the self-organization, and that is harmony. So what is the innateness of an animal that belongs to the animal order? What is the innateness of a plant, a shrub? What is the innateness of a human being? What is the innateness of soil, air, water? This all can be known. And we'll see that the innateness is something which is the innate harmony in every unit. And this is something which is definite, continuous, and universal. Are you able to see this? And we'll also see that every unit is submerged in space. Being submerged in space, it is in coexistence with every other unit. So the essence of existence is coexistence, something that we said earlier, and this is also to be known. And this is something again, which is definite, continuous and universal. So right understanding essentially is to see the essence of the reality as it is, 
and that is something which is definite continuous and universal and this is the content of knowing now we cannot know the form and property because it has variety it keeps on changing but we can definitely know the natural characteristic innateness and coexistence and here what is required is essentially to activate the higher activities of the self because i can see these three that is natural characteristic innateness and coexistence only through my higher activities now what are these higher activities so contemplation understanding and realization these words we had displayed earlier in some of the lectures we'll talk about these activities also and these three put together are called as right understanding so i am able to contemplate upon the natural characteristic i am able to understand the innateness that is self organization and i am able to realize the coexistence and it is going to happen in the self by the self isn't it can you see this that it is you who is going to realize it is you who is going to understand it is you who is going to contemplate it's not the body the body is a physiochemical entity and only an instrument of yours in this process and when we are seeing the reality as it is in its completeness the body doesn't have a role to play the body can at the most transfer some information from the rest of the world to you but it is you who is going to have these activities in you and based on this right understanding you are going to have assurance in the self so pause a bit try to explore and verify whether this is going to happen in the self or not whether this is something to be known or not or something else to be known try to make it out now going further right understanding essentially seeing the essence of the reality as it is that is seeing the part that is definite universal and continuous and what is definite universal and continuous so it is a natural characteristic that is participation in the larger order innateness that is self organization and coexistence that is submergence and natural characteristic can be said in another way as relationship so when we had discussed about trust respect this is essentially the innate feelings in the self for other self and this is the participation of one self with another self and that is termed as relationship in a similar manner we can see the relation of one unit with another unit in the nature there are four orders in nature every unit in the nature is related to every other unit in the nature being in space and that is something to be contemplated upon that is something to be seen by the self similarly every unit is there innately in harmony and this harmony has to be understood and every, and every unit is in coexistence and this has to be realized and how do i do this so i do this through contemplation understanding and realization so the content of contemplation is to see the natural characteristic that is the relationship the content of understanding is to see the harmony that is the innateness and the content of realization is to see the submergence that is coexistence and ultimately there are only few things to understand there are only nine things and what are those nine things so i have to understand the innateness of the four orders i have to contemplate upon the natural characteristic of the four orders and i have to see the coexistence in the existence so essentially we have to only ensure these three kinds of things and there are only nine things to understand here there are only nine things to see here so do you see that the existence can be known the existence may appear very large okay and there is a wide variety in terms of form and property but when you try to see these three realities that is the natural characteristic harmony and coexistence it is very brief it is very precise it is something that can be known so the whole existence can be known and who is the knower it is the self which is the knower you are going to see this and it is block b1 in the self that is going to see this and this is something that we are working for to activate block b1 to activate the dimension of knowing in the self now when you go to c so you see the for that includes the shape size density of a unit now here we have used the term u1 and u2 so when you are talking about a for it is something which is particular to a particular unit so every unit will have some shape size density so your body has a shape and that has been changing when you were a child the body had one kind of shape okay 10 years hence the body had a different kind of shape 10 years hence it will have a different kind of shape and so on the size is also changing 
Now, if you talk about the density, okay, so if you can look at the density of the body, it will also change. So for every unit, there is a change in shape, size, density, particularly when you're talking about the material units. Can you see that the self that is a conscious unit also has a shape and size? If not, then keep it open. Try to think about this, try to explore this. I will refer to this. Now, when you talk about the property, the property is effect of one unit on another unit. And there is a recognition and fulfillment by unit one with unit two. For example, when you consume food. So let's say if you consume something which is edible, let's say you consume an, uh, let's say you consume a spinach plant, right? By cooking it, it will have one kind of effect on the body. If you consume spinach plant without cooking, it will have another kind of effect on the body. In place of spinach, if you consume some poisonous plant, it will have another kind of effect on the body. And you'll see that there is recognition and fulfillment between your body and the plant that you are consuming. Isn't it? So the property essentially is between two units, unit one and unit two. Now, when we are going to see the reality, we are seeing through sensation. This is one part of seeing whether the body and self both are included. And you can see that there are five sense organs in the body. So I can see through eyes, I can see through ears, I can see through nose, I can see through tongue, I can see through skin. These are five sense organs through which I am testing. So essentially seeing through sensation means testing. So we hear sound, we consume something and get a taste, we smell something and get a taste, isn't it? And so many ways of uh, testing are there. Now, when you see through sensation, then you can see for shape size density and let me say that precisely you are not able to see the entire form also you are able to see a part of the form and you are able to see a very small part of that property that is effect on another unit when you are seeing through sensation so if you are getting some information from the body and you are trying to see the property right you are able to see only a small part of it when now the second way of seeing is seeing what is rational and there you are able to see again some part of the property maybe in more detail, where you are able to see the effect of one unit on another unit. And there, you are not only testing, you are also analyzing. So you are getting some information through sensation, and then you try to analyze. So if I put one chemical in contact with another chemical, what kind of compound is going to form? Now, this is something where analysis is required. So we do some measurement, we try to do some calculation, and then we are derived then we are able to derive some conclusion about the property. And this is something that you have been doing in your courses or in science. Now, the limitation of the present day science is that it can only talk about material things. And when it talks about the material things, it only talks about the form and property. So there is another way of seeing, and that is seeing what is existential, which is the essence of the reality. And there we are able to see the natural characteristic, innateness and coexistence. And here, the higher activities of the self are involved, that is contemplation, understanding, and realization. So we are going to focus upon these higher activities, contemplation, understanding, and realization in most of the lectures. Because when you are seeing through sensation, you are getting only some information. And that information is neither definite, nor continuous, nor universal. It may work to fulfill the relation with other units in the nature, be it a human being or the uh, physical order or a unit of the bio order or animal order, but certainly it cannot form the part of right understanding. To understand the reality as it is, I need to work upon contemplation, understanding and realization. And this is what forms the right understanding. I hope you are able to see this. So try to make out the difference between seeing through sensation, seeing what is rational and seeing what is existential. So you can do, for example, take any five objects in your room, right? And then try to see what is its form, what is its property, and what is the natural characteristic, innateness, and coexistence. Let's say there's a fan in your room. So the fan has some form. The fan also has some property. So the fan has one tubular portion, the fan has some blades, and this is what makes its form, isn't it? The shape and size. The fan has a property. When you turn on the switch, then it starts rotating. 
if the power is there it will start rotating when the power is not there it will not start rotating so the fan has a certain property with electricity a fan has a certain property with the switch and this is where the fan is related to the other unit and there is some effect of one unit on the other unit and here when you try to analyze this then you are able to understand what property does fan have it's not only that you can just see it through your eyes and make out the property you have to turn the switch on and off to see what property does the fan have in relation to electricity isn't it but seeing what is the natural characteristic or the innateness or the coexistence of the fan you have to look into the order to which it belongs so the fan belongs to the physical order so to be able to contemplate upon the natural characteristic or innateness or submergence you have to see these three for the physical order just by looking through eyes or analyzing you are not able to make out these three can you see this can you see this limitation so try to see what we can see through sensation what we can see through uh, our analysis and what we can see through the higher activities of the self now looking at the complete description of nature this is something that we had discussed in the previous course also and we'll keep on referring this time and again so there are four orders in nature the physical order bio order animal order and human order now looking at the innateness and natural characteristic of these four orders we can see that the innateness of the physical order is existence that is continues to be so let's say long there is there is wood there which belongs to the physical order now you burn the wood okay it turns into ashes and smoke and some part of it may also get converted to water so the wood is no longer there but every atom and molecule of the wood does exist its existence continues to be the innateness of the physical order is existence that is it continues to be the form may change the property may change but the existence is there when you look at the natural characteristic the natural characteristic of the physical order is composition decomposition so so a unit of the physical order participates in the larger order through composition or decomposition take for example you are building a house now what happens here you put brick one over another and the house gets composed isn't it and some day let's say when the earthquake comes the building goes back to the soil so it has decomposed even to make a brick you decompose the soil then you compose a brick and then add one brick over another in the process of composition and you make a building and it may be the case that due to some reason the building comes back to the soil so in the entire physical order if you look at it only these two activities are taking place composition and decomposition and this is how the participation is taking place when you look at the bio order the innateness of the bio order is existence as well as growth so so long as, hence so long as there is respiration in any unit of the bio order there is going to be growth isn't it so a plant will keep on growing so long as it belongs to the bio order when it dries up it goes back to the physical order and there is only existence there but so long as it belongs to the bio order the growth is going to be there now if you look at the participation of any unit of bio order it is in terms of composition decomposition as well as nurture and worsen so for example if you consume something from the bio order it may nurture your body or worsen your body if you consume something which is edible it will nurture your body if you consume something which is not edible it will worsen your body and the same way any unit of the bio order participates with every other unit of the bio order the body the human body being a part of the bio order in this manner if you look at the animal order so animal order has two entities one is the self and the other is body so in the body the same thing is there which is there in the bio order so there is existence and growth if you try to study the innateness but when you look at the self there is will to live in the self in i so the animal wants to live isn't it now if you look at the natural characteristic of the animal order so we'll see that there is composition decomposition as well as nurture and worsen in the body of the animal order and the body of the animal order is something which is a unit of the bio order 
but when we study the self there is cruelty and non cruelty in the self uh, so you can see that an animal participates with another animal or bird in that animal order either being cruel or non cruel and you can see a variety of animals some of them being cruel some of them being non cruel but what is our focus here is about the human being so if you look at the human being right human being is also coexistence of self and body so in the body we can see that there is existence as well as growth in the self there is not only will to live there is will to live with happiness and not only happiness there is will to live with continuous happiness and this is what we are aspiring for isn't it and this will to live with continuous happiness is ensured through right feeling and right thought which is the resolution and this right feeling and right thought is ensured by right understanding if you look at the natural characteristic of the human being the human order then there are six things written here perseverance bravery generosity kindness beneficence and compassion so perseverance is to have the clarity that this is the resolution and i am going to live by this bravery is to help the other get resolved generosity is to invest one's self for helping the other be resolved so this is the way we can understand the natural characteristic we can go into details of all these kindness beneficence compassion but since this is not the core part of this lecture i am not going to all these details so we can now see that for all the four orders the innateness and the natural characteristic is something which is definite which is continuous and it is universal so long as a unit belongs to a particular order it is going to be very much definite and it going to continue also and this is going to be common to every unit of that particular order and that's how we can rightly understand this that's how we can know this because this is not going to change so when you go to study the four orders so the innateness of the four orders and the natural characteristic of the four orders put together there are eight things to be known and every unit of these four orders are there submerged in space and we can realize the submergence of the units in space and thus there are nine things to be known now you can see that this will to live with continuous happiness is going to be fulfilled by right feeling and right thought which is going to be ensured by right understanding and the right understanding is going to be ensured by human education sanskar so we have to study the inheritance of all the four orders so we can see that the inheritance of the human order is education sanskar and inheritance essentially means the basis of definite conduct across generations so what can be the basis of conduct human conduct definite conduct for a human being that forms its inheritance and that is the education sanskar and through education sanskar only the definiteness of conduct gets transferred from one generation to another generation and that's how it is called as the inheritance if you look at the inheritance of the animal it is breed based so depending upon the breed the conduct is transferred from one generation to another generation the inheritance of the bio order is seed and it is on the base of seed that the conduct is decided you can see that a very small seed of a very big tree determines the conduct of the entire tree if you look at the banyan tree how large the tree is and if you look at the seed of the banyan tree how small it is but based on the seed right the conduct of the entire banyan tree gets decided if you look at the physical order the inheritance is constitution based so depending about the constitution its conduct is decided so let's say hydrogen is there it has one kind of constitution oxygen is there it has one kind of constitution water is there it has another kind of constitution so depending upon the constitution the conduct is decided so hydrogen is something which burns with a pop sound oxygen is something that helps in combustion and water is something that extinguishes the fire so you can see that depending on the constitution the conduct is decided and that becomes the inheritance of that particular order now going further if you look at the participation of human being in the entire nature so it is to understand the inherent harmony in the nature and to live accordingly that is to facilitate a conducive environment for the activity or at least not violate it for all the orders so how do i participate with the rest of nature 
So with this understanding, we are able to see that how we can facilitate a conducive environment for the activity, or at least not violate it for all the orders. Similarly, how to facilitate the innateness or at least not violate it of all the orders and how to ensure the inheritance or at least not violate it of all the orders. So when you study all these four orders, so if you look at the physical order, what could be the human participation for mutual fulfillment? Now here you can take examples from every order and try to work it out, try to explore for yourself, verify for yourself, whether this is something that comes to you very naturally. So when you look at the physical order, we can facilitate the existence by ensuring conducive environment and maintaining or ensuring its constitution. For example, the constitution of earth. Now, what we are doing today, we are depleting the earth by taking out so many resources. We are polluting the air, water, soil, and this is how the constitution is getting disturbed. So we can maintain the constitution of the planet, the earth, like this is one example. In a similar way, we can talk about other units of the physical order, how we can maintain the constitution of the air. Now in the air, we know that there is oxygen, carbon dioxide, and noxes, so many gases are there. If you disturb this constitution of air, ultimately it is we who are going to suffer, isn't it? Similarly, in the bio order, we can facilitate the growth by ensuring the conducive environment and maintaining or ensuring the seed. So since the inheritance is seed based, so we have to see how the units of bio order continue generation by generation. Now, some uh, studies show that already we have destroyed so many varieties of plants. In some parts of our country, India, we have seen that there have been so many varieties of paddy, but gradually with time, we have lost some varieties of paddy. There are so many varieties of herbs, but gradually we are losing so many varieties of herbs. So it's our responsibility, it's our participation to ensure that the seeds are preserved, right? Because every seed is going to play a different role in the entire nature. When it comes to animal order, we have to facilitate the care of the body by ensuring physical facility, environment, and existence and growth of the body. And then to ensure its will to live, maintaining or ensuring its breed, for example, breed of cow, tiger. So when it comes to animal order, since the inheritance is breed based, so it's our participation to ensure that the breed is sustained, breed is maintained. Many varieties of the breed of cow are on the verge of extinction. Many types of birds and animals are on the verge of extinction, isn't it? If you look at the data regarding the Royal Bengal Tiger, it is said that in 1901, there were at least 50,000 Royal Bengal Tigers. And presently their numbers are very few, limited to 2,000 or 3,000. So we are gradually losing their breed. We are losing, we are losing breeds of so many kinds of birds and animals. And it is our participation that we are able to maintain the breed. Now when it comes to human order, so our participation is to facilitate care of the body by ensuring the physical facility environment for existence and growth of the body. And to facilitate its will to live with continuous happiness by ensuring human education sanskar, participating in developing or maintaining undivided society and universal human order. So what could be my role with the human order? So it is in terms of ensuring the right kind of education and sanskar so that generation by generation, we have the human beings who are able to live with definite human conduct, who are able to live with right understanding, right feeling and right thought. And this is our participation with the human order. So this is something for you to work upon. So you can take some examples here of any unit of the physical order, like soil, air, water, and you can see how we can sustain its constitution. Similarly, we have to look at different units of bio order. So you can again take some examples. Maybe you can look at the plants and trees growing in your area and try to see whether the seed is sustained or not, whether the uh, uh, you can, <clears throat> so you can take some examples of plants and trees growing in your neighboring areas and try to see whether the seeds are maintained, right? They are not lost. Similarly, for the animal order, we can look at the uh, birds and animals around us and try to see whether their breed is sustained or not. 
the breed is maintained or not. And again, looking at the human order, since we are able to see that it is the human order only which is disturbing the all three orders in the nature uh, due to lack of right understanding and right feeling. So we have to ensure human education sanskar so that it is able to ensure happiness for oneself, happiness for other human beings. And at the same time, ensure that the inheritance of the other three orders is also maintained. So this is our participation with the entire nature. And this is something that we have to work upon. And at the core is the right understanding. Because when you go to participate, ultimately you have to contemplate. You have to be able to see that you are able to make out the relationship. So when you go to participate, ultimately at the core is the right understanding. So unless the contemplation is there for the natural characteristic, the relationship cannot be fulfilled. Unless there is understanding of harmony, one is not able to be self-organized within oneself and thus not able to participate in the organization of the larger order. And unless one is able to ensure realization of submergence, right, the right understanding is not complete. And as we have told earlier, the right understanding gets complete with realization of submergence of nature in space. So to be able to participate in the entire nature rightly, I need to work for contemplation, understanding and realization. So what could be the participation of human being with the rest of nature? That is the other three orders. So it is to ensure the preservation of the rest of nature. And what does preservation mean? Preservation means to be able to ensure the enrichment, protection and right utilization of the rest of nature. And that in turn ensures prosperity in the human being. One is able to fulfill the needs, the physiochemical needs in a manner so that the preservation of the nature is also ensured. So we have been talking about mutual prosperity and that essentially means that with right understanding, we are able to have our interaction with the rest of nature in such a way that we are able to fulfill the physiochemical needs of the body and feel prosperous on one end. On the second end, we are able to fulfill the rest of nature by preserving the nature. So how is it going to happen? So it is going to happen by protecting its innateness, protecting and enriching its inheritance and making right utilization of the nature in line with its activity. It, at least not violating their innateness, inheritance or activity. So we can protect the innateness. So we talked about the four orders. We looked at the innateness of the four orders, right? And how we can protect the innateness is something to be understood. How, how we can protect and enrich the inheritance is something to be understood and how we can make the right utilization of the nature, which is in line with its activity, it also has to be understood. And this is the participation of the human being with the rest of nature. So we have been talking about technology. So when you go to devise a technology, this is something that you have to be clear about. Through our technological advancements, are we able to ensure these three or not? So through our technological advancements, are we able to ensure this or not? This is something to be made out. With so much of resource depletion, pollution, natural calamities, are we really working in the right direction? Now with this right understanding only, we will be able to make the right plan, the right program to enrich the nature, to preserve the nature. So the same thing written here. So the participation of human being in the entire nature is in this manner. For the physical order, which includes the soil, water, air, etc. We can protect its innateness, which is the existence. And we can protect the constitution of earth, for example. With bio order, we can protect and nurture its innateness. So existence and growth has to be protected and nurtured. So we can put manure for facilitating the growth of the plants. We can ensure its inheritance. That is the seed. We can maintain the seed of rice, for example. There are so many varieties of plants and trees. And we have to make sure that we are able to maintain the seeds of all these plants and trees. Because every plant and tree has a role to play in the nature. If you destroy these varieties, these seeds, if you destroy these plants and trees, ultimately we are going to suffer. So when we are not able to preserve the rest of nature, ultimately we feel scarcity of food to eat. We feel that there is temperature rising on the planet and ultimately it is we who suffer. And for everything to fulfill every need, we have to invest much more wealth for that. So looking at the participation of human being in the entire nature, we can work out the participation for all the four orders. So, so with, with the, the physical order that includes soil, water, air, etc. Our participation is to protect the innateness, that is existence. One example given here is protect the innateness of 
earth, that is the constitution of earth. Similarly, we can see how we can protect the constitution of soil, water, air. If we deplete the soil, if we make the soil barren, ultimately it is we who are going to suffer. If we pollute the air, ultimately we are going to suffer. If we pollute the water, ultimately we are going to suffer. So we have to ensure that the constitution is maintained, the existence is maintained. When it comes to bio order, which includes plants, trees, so not only that we have to protect the innateness, but also we have to nurture the innateness because there is existence as well as growth there. So for example, if you talk about plants and trees, so we can put manure for facilitating the growth of the plants, isn't it? So it comes to uh, work out a program for plants and trees so we can put manure for facilitating the growth of the plants, isn't it? So this is the way we can nurture the plants and when it comes to inheritance, so we can maintain the seed of the plant. One example is to maintain the seed of rice. We can look at various varieties of plants and we can see whether we are able to maintain the seeds of all these plants or not. When it comes to animal order, so we can see there are two realities associated with the animal order, one is the body and the other is the self. So when it comes to the self, we have to protect the innateness, that is the will to live. So we can make arrangement for adequate forest, food, shelter for birds and plants. We also have to ensure the inheritance and that is breed. So we have to see that the breed of the uh, birds and the animals are maintained. For example, cow, tiger, sparrow, we have to see that their breeds are maintained. Each of these units has a particular role to play in the nature. If we destroy the animals, we destroy the birds, we destroy the insects, ultimately we are going to suffer. And so many data are being reported today how we are suffering because these breeds are getting lost day by day. When it comes to human order, we have to make out the program for ensuring the protection of innateness and what is the innateness that is the will to live with continuous happiness and for that we have to provide the societal systems for facilitating and living with right understanding so one dimension of society is education and sanskar and we need to work sincerely for education and sanskar so that the basic aspiration of continuity of happiness is ensured generation by generation and we have to ensure the inheritance for which the education sanskar has the role to play. Now, when it comes to human order, so we are there in the human order and we have to protect the innateness of the human order and the innateness is to build to live with continuous happiness. So we have to make the right kind of program so that the will to live with happiness in continuity is fulfilled. And for that, we have to provide societal systems for facilitating and living with right understanding. So we have to understand the human goal. We have to see how every human being in the society can live with happiness in continuity. To ensure the inheritance, which is education and sanskar, we have to ensure the right process for education and sanskar, right from childhood to adulthood, so that at every stage, the child is able to understand the reality, the child is able to see the reality, the child is able to see one's role with the entire nature in the entire existence, and we need to ensure value-based education for the same. So I hope you are able to see this. Right now, again, as I said, we can take various examples from each of these orders and we have to see whether we are able to uh, protect the innateness, we are able to protect the natural characteristic. So as we said earlier, we can take examples from each of these orders and we have to work out the participation with each of these units. So you can take five examples from the physical order, five from animal order, five from bio order and the human order and try to work out how we can participate rightly with each of these units. So you can pick some units from your room or the surrounding, which are there in the physical order. We can pick some plants and trees. We can pick some birds and animals. And we can try to see whether our participation is right. Whether and we can see whether we are able to participate in accordance with our natural acceptance. And this is your role in the entire nature. Now for self-reflection, there is some assignment, some homework for you as we have been taking in every class. So take any unit, say a fruit, and articulate its form, property, vis-a-vis -vis another unit, say your body, the natural characteristic, innateness, and coexistence. So maybe you can take the example of a mango. So you can describe the form of a mango, its shape and size. 
you can describe the property what property does the mango have in association with your body and then since the mango belongs to the bio order what what is its natural characteristic what is its innateness what is its coexistence in a similar manner you can take so many examples right and try to make it out so you'll see that ultimately there are only nine things there are very few things to understand innateness of the four orders that makes it four things to understand natural characteristic of the four orders and then coexistence of each of these orders and you can explain all this right so this is something that you have uh, listened to in this lecture but you can try to recapitulate within yourself and try to write this by yourself thirdly you can enlist what you are doing to fulfill your participation with physical order that is physical facility that you are using by order for example vegetables fruits that you are eating <clears throat> animal order like birds animals human order for example your neighbor your colleague your subordinate your superior so you can make out the program with each of these so this is the assignment for you today so in today's lecture we talked about right understanding we saw that there are five aspects of any reality the form property natural characteristic innateness and coexistence and we need to understand the uh, natural characteristic innateness and coexistence and for that we have to work for contemplation understanding and realization we could also study the various orders of nature and see what their natural characteristics are what their inheritance is what their innateness is and then we could see our role with the different orders in the nature now with this we'll go further to understand the existence now with this we'll proceed for the next lecture